Finally, doing Leo J. Gru's classical chunk style, which had a lot more coiling in it. The Leo J. Gru stuff is stuff like. Uh, a lot of deep coiling stuff. We do a number of different forms here. I don't know, where's that move? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to do what it's really <laughs> summer for Christ's sakes. But yeah, we teach um, basic old eight palms, Chung style Lao Bajang, came down from the General Gao School. We teach Liu Jing Ru's eight basic palms. Do you know all 64 from Chung style? No. But that's what we're doing at the moment. At the moment, I know 24 of the Chung style 64. Before Liu Jing Ru started teaching us the 64, we did the eight basic palm changes. We did the 64 hands, his great line drills. We did his cascading palms. We did his deer horn knives. We did a two man set. Now he's teaching us the 64 palms. So I figure two or three more trips to China before I finish that one. Ah. But, uh, so we're doing those other sets of his. Plus this class is Mr. Chan's solo form and Mr. Chan's two-person form. Um, we also do BK Francis's set to develop energy and work with meditation and the E.J. stuff. 
Yeah. So we do a number of different styles around here, but all of them are variants of junk style. Yeah, how long have you been studying? I've been studying uh, Bagua since 1975, Tai Chi since 1973. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I've been teaching here since 1980, right in this room. Oh wow, you've been here what, 30 wow. years? 30 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's what's relatively unique me, that's and lucky about this place. Most yeah. martial arts schools don't get to sit in one place for 30 years. Yeah. So who's been with you here besides the dojo in 30 years? Uh, no one. <laughs> no one. <laughs> no one. Mike's been here almost 20. 18 years. Yep. Um, Ollie's been here almost 20 also. Um, have you hit 10 yet? No. Actually, no. Newbie. Nine years. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, people come and go. Last night, a couple of my older students said uh, were some of the first instructors to come out of here in 94. The husband, a couple of husbands have been trained with me since 86. They were here last night. But people come and go. Yeah. What happens is you're teaching real martial arts, you get a lot of young people. And they get married, they buy a house, they have kids. Those are the three days that all of a sudden you don't see them anymore. <laughs> good for them, not so good yeah. for us. How do you feel about the, all these um, UFC fighters and stuff? No. Um, I enjoy it. You know, it's a fight sport. I enjoy watching fights. Um, I like boxing. I like mixed martial arts. Um, I mean, if two guys look kind of equal and they spill out of the Mars bar in the corner, I'll watch them. I like watching fighting. So, so you I enjoy mixed martial arts as another fight sport venue that gives us a lot more fighting to watch than we had previously. Do you think a good, well-trained fighter in Bagwan would do well in the um, UFC? Probably not. Why is I, that? Had, I had a student that was, for a while, that was a writer for the UFC. Very interesting guy. Told some wacky stories about Tank Abbott. But Ted Blumberg's been running around for 10, 12 years now trying to find internal fighters. And internal fighters just don't usually do ground fighting. Once you start training in submission grappling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you're doing mixed martial arts. It's a sport with specific rules. And the big problem is Bagua is difficult to adapt to tournament fighting anywhere. And the big all Chinese tournaments in 1928, 31, 32, they didn't let the Bagua guys fight. Because if you get into pure Bagua, an awful lot of it is based on kicking out the knees, smashing you in the crotch, cutting across your throat, and poking out your eyes. An awful lot of Bagua does that. And that'll neutralize a lot of good sport fighting, but it's not sporting. In general, there's a big difference between sport fighting and fighting, as in martial arts are often about ways that little guys can defend themselves against bigger guys. The ways that little guys defend themselves against bigger guys are not sporting. That's why you have to have weight classes in <laughs> sport fighting. Because once you have real rules, the bigger guys have the advantage. The only ways to make up the difference in size are methods that are not sporting. So it's just the difference between who trains for a sport fight and who trains in classical martial arts. Like I like to point out, Bagua got famous for the Beijing bodyguards and security guards. Those boys didn't go to work empty-handed. You know, some of them fought in challenge matches and showed their empty hand skills, but people went to work with deer horn knives and broad swords and straight swords and, you know, it's martial arts. It's different than sport fighting. It's a whole different thing. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, Bagua's a start of change, you know, don't you adapt to the change? You adapt to the principles yeah. to the sport fighting rules, but you're fighting within that sport with those rules, so it becomes sport fighting instead of actual classical martial arts. It's impossible to do classical martial arts because they are designed for an awful lot of things and all of them they, they just aren't sporting. So you adapt your classical martial art the best you can to the rules of that particular sporting event. Which on the other hand, as I said, I enjoy thoroughly. I love fight sports, all of them. Oh, okay, okay. I hear that. <laughs> Is Frank out of here, people, for Man on Stand Up? Keep watching. Peace.